been asking you other things today, uh, mainly about how we take back control of our schools. Give us a call. We'd love speaking to you in person if you deign to pick up the phone. The number is 0344 499 1000. I'm glad you're doing it. Text us on 87 travel 2 Remember to put talk in front of your text or tweet us on X at go. Talk TV. Uh, yeah, see, I, I'm, I'm, get, I'm picking it up. Uh, we don't want to say that. That wouldn't even make sense. Yeah, yeah. go on, Auto Q, move along. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Uh, now, an East London school faces closure after violent messages were sent to staff threatening to burn the school to the ground. Barclay Primary School in Leighton received a number of bomb threats following the head teacher's decision to ban students from wearing pro-Palestinian badges. The school has been forced to hire private security in recent weeks since becoming embroiled in a row following claims a pupil had been bullied by teachers for being Palestinian. In a letter addressed to all parents, the school said it had also been forced to close its main reception to the public, while CCTV cameras have also been installed. Joining us now from outside Barclay Primary School is Talk TV correspondent Nick Ellaby. Uh, thanks uh, for being there, Nick. Uh, uh, I'm not seeing any protesters outside there now, but what, it, what is the word? I mean, we were hearing that uh, what to Barclay School tried to do was to ban primary school kids from wearing pro-Palestinian badges, and that's what's caused the uh, problems. Uh, what are you learning? Good afternoon, Kev. Good afternoon, Alex. Yeah, well, this all happened sort of November, December time, as you mentioned. Uh, one of the days here, they had a, a, I think it was a children in need day, and a young boy came into school wearing a Palestinian badge on his coat. And the school has a policy of not allowing children to display any political symbols on their clothing. Uh, but just after that, some rumours circulated online that the boy was suspended from the school and also bullied by members of staff and other pupils. An internal and external investigation both found that no such bullying took place. And as I say, the school does have that policy of not allowing political symbols on the clothing. But following that, in December, there was a, a protest gathered here. Uh, the night before, masked men had, had put up Palestinian flags around the school. And then because of that Ferrari, the school had to close early for Christmas holidays, a few days early. And then over the Christmas holidays, the school received a written threat, a credible written threat uh, against the school. Police were then involved. And then on January the 8th, a phone call was made to the school threatening arson, both against the school and also a particular member of staff. Now, it's important to point out at this juncture that there's, there's no suggestion that those threats came from parents of kids at the school. Uh, as far as I'm aware, I've been speaking to parents this morning and they say they don't believe that that was the case either. But as you say, the school has put special measures out, so they've got lots more CCTV. The gates here at Barclay Primary in, in Leighton and East London are already very high. You may be able to see in high-vis jackets the private security. There were three private security guards here this morning. And indeed, there were four members of, of London's Metropolitan Police here this morning as well. There was a sergeant on duty just looking over things and also speaking to a couple of journalists that were here and then three other patrol officers in a car and then sort of when parents were dropping their kids off this morning just milling around checking that everything was okay. Um, the school has written to the parents to explain what's happened. I've been speaking to a number of people here this morning at parents when they, when they dropped their kids off for school and lots of parents telling me that they'd rather the politics was kept out of this and the school can return to a place of learning. I spoke to one father, a guy called Adnan Haider, who has two young girls here, and this is what he told me. I'm one of the father of parents, and I'm very concerned about what exactly is happening. But we always encourage our children that it's a school place, is not a politics to discuss, so we should encourage our children that uh, it's just a school, leave it as a school. Uh, if you want to discuss anything, then don't send your children to the school. Uh, the place is only for the education, so you encourage your children. It's just a school, and leave the, everything aside. A number of other parents I spoke to here at the gates this morning didn't want to go on camera, either because they have children here or they want to send more children here in the future. But a number of parents told me, you know, they're not happy about all of this politics disrupting their children's learning. A number of parents also unhappy about 
the fact that maybe kids aren't allowed to display uh, sympathy for what's going on in Israel and Gaza. That's the feeling I'm getting here at the moment. Um, I do have a, a report from the school. We actually had a, a letter from an anonymous whistleblower who's worried about reprisals. A member of the staff at the school worried about threats and abuse and harassment of members of staff. And that's what's led to the school warning that they could be forced to shut and, and go online. The school itself did uh, give us a statement. I tried to speak to members of staff this morning, but they've been told not to speak to the press. The school do say, Barclay Primary School, that they're working with all relevant agencies to manage a really complex problem and they want to return to teaching and learning and get past all this. And they do welcome the ongoing support, they say, of parents and families, and they have no further comment to make at this time. And hopefully this can all simmer down and, and things can get back to normal here. Kev. Uh, just, got one look, just before you go, Nick, uh, one quick question. I know that area quite well. Uh, my brother used to live there, Leighton. It, it's a, it, the, the, to say that that is a Muslim community is an understatement. It's very, very Muslim. Nothing wrong with that, of course. Uh, so I'm finding it hard to believe that a school in the centre of this uh, very Muslim community would be Islamophobic. I Sorry, we've just lost, lost you uh, there, Kevin. Uh, I don't okay. know if okay. you can uh, ask me that question again. I've just lost communications with you. Can you hear me now, the, Nick? The, the, the parents. Yeah, okay, I've got, I've got you again. Sorry, okay, ask I, just, the I just again. was I've saying that this is a very Muslim community, Leighton. I know the area well, and I'm finding it hard to believe that a school in the middle of such a deeply Muslim area uh, would be Islamophobic. Well, like I said in, it, just, just now, that there was an internal and an external report done, both by the school and independent body, that found there was no such bullying. The problem, I think, was because of those rumours circulating in November and December online that the child, the young child, who was displaying a Palestinian flag on his coat here uh, and was asked to, to remove that, was bullied by members of staff. And there are a number of parents I've spoken to today who still believe that to be the case. But those two investigations, both internal and external, found no such bullying had taken place. And as I understand, the boy was not suspended. He's just been asked not to display that Palestinian flag when he comes to school. I actually went inside this morning. The school uniform is a blue jumper and grey trousers and a grey skirt, very plain. And the school wished to keep it that way. So, as I say, you know, no, no confirmed reports of Islamophobia by the staff here. And uh, they're just very, very keen to, to get back to normal and things to calm down a bit. Thanks very much, Thanks, Nick. Nick. Good report, as always.